This chocolate is absolutely delicious. I got it on discount. So fucking good. Oh, I didn't rob you. Oh my god. Got it. Okay, you guys. Hello, my name is Sharice. Welcome to my channel. It's such a weird intro. I yeah. Okay. Anyway. Excuse my um, window insulation right here. My camera is so wonky at this point. I think that my phone is like, honestly, on its last thread. Uh, when I got it, it was already pretty cracked and I've dropped it a few times and the screen is breaking outwards in the middle. And um, right now, fixing that screen is not my first priority, but I ended up dropping my phone into my dog's water bowl and I think that it messed something up in my phone because now it will just turn off randomly. Basically, my camera is a little wonky and like the slightest bit of light, as you can see kind of in this corner, is going to make it all go white and it was just too much. So I'm kind of blocking the sun out from one side at least. But yeah, here I am guys. That All of that had nothing to really do with this video other than the chocolate. But in this video, I wanted to talk about how living in the city has actually affected my menstrual cycle, my period, and PMSing. So, I, I generally love my period. I am a big advocate for loving your period and for taking that time to yourself to nurture yourself and allow your body to rest and to eat good foods and spend time alone or with the women in your life that are nurturing um i tend to like to be almost completely reclusive on my period at least for like the first few days just a little background on my period i used to experience severely painful periods that would end up with me in the hospital i think there's a chance that i have had endometriosis um my mother has it and my best friend has it and a lot of the symptoms and issues that i deal with sound very closely that that could be what it is so ever since i was a little girl when i first got my period my periods were extremely heavy they would last a week sometimes longer heavy heavy flow maybe this is too too much information for some of you guys you really don't have to watch but periods are such a natural part of life most women experience what it's like to have a period and bleed every month so it's not something that is unnatural and it's not something that's disgusting. But anyway, um, when I was 19, I got on the Depo-Provera shot and it ended up taking away my period completely. I got on the shot because I was in a relationship. But unfortunately, the shot had such a negative effect on my mental health. Um, I was already in an abusive relationship at the time, so I will contribute that as well, but the depo shot actually increased my suicidal thoughts. Even though that was helpful for- it took away my period so I didn't experience that monthly period pain, it was so detrimental to my mental health that I had to get off the shot. Since then, I have not used any form of birth control. I am actually very against birth control, but at the same time, if you choose to be on birth control, I do not judge you for that, and I will not be somebody who's like, you should not be on birth control, but I will say that I've done a lot of research into birth controls and how they affect you and your hormones and not just your hormones but your brain and how your brain interacts with day-to-day -day life and how this can affect you long 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 time down the road even after getting off of it but i do believe that women should have the right to have birth control i personally choose a different route and I will still advocate against certain types of birth control because of the detrimental detrimental effect towards women's bodies as well as their brains. But like I said, if you are, if that's what you choose, I have no judgment towards you and I will never be like, you have to get off of that. <laughs> okay? So to each their own, every, I, yeah, to each their own. But I got off of this and it took me about a year before I started getting my period again and I actually wasn't it really experiencing any pain in my periods but 
I started getting painful periods again probably when I moved back when I moved into my car about five years ago and at this point though I would spend my like three to seven days of my period just like in solitude or doing things I enjoy allowing my body to rest and it became such a nurturing time of the month where I could proudly say like I loved my period and I would still deal with like the intense emotional mood swings that come with our periods if you are somebody who deals with the period perhaps you don't necessarily deal with those intense mood swings everybody is actually different in that not everybody experiences their menstrual cycle in the same type of way but for me I was never like a bitchy it was it was never like bitchy for me on my periods I would just get really sad and inclusive I think that's the word reclusive I guess and want to be alone and take my space and I didn't really want to be around guys as much but I still love my periods and it was still actually a very peaceful period period of my my time for me each month but I found that since I have moved to the city I don't have that anymore and I think part of it is because I'm in a job and I do not have a type of job where I have the ability to just call out of work the first couple days of my period if I need that for myself because I will get fired. It sucks, but I can no longer allow, I can no longer take that time and use it as a nurturing period because I am in this type of society that is push, push, go, 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 and honestly is kind of anti-self-nurturing and self-care, um, which really sucks because that goes against everything that I believe and teach for myself as well as for others, but I've also found that each period that comes around, my bitchiness level is through the fucking roof. And I have never been a a bitchy PMSer. I've never been like that until I moved here into the city. And it has been really rough. And I think that a big part of it is like I am already overwhelmed and overstimulated by being around people all the time. And I live with my brother and... I don't get a whole lot of alone time. I do every once in a while when I go to the park like I am right now, but it's just, I think that it's just that frustration builds up inside of me and this is not a place that I want to be and I'm not happy where I'm at. I hate my job. I, I'm i just struggling in a lot of different ways and I have been constantly discouraged by what I have felt and seen living in the city. So there's that aspect and the other aspect of my period that has changed is how intense the mood swings have gotten so my mood swings used to be like okay get a little sad girl feel through my shit and I knew it was my period and it's gonna be fine being here the past three months I have actually had to call out a couple days around when my period started because of how severe my mental breakdowns were the last two times I've been to the psych hospital have been around my period and I'm not doing this as an excuse because a lot of men and even women like to use women on their period as an excuse to belittle and berate them for just being emotional and hormonal. But this is a serious thing like and especially when you are have a comparative like I do of having a peaceful menstrual cycle having peaceful pms basically having a peaceful a more peaceful type of this and then moving to the city where i'm literally ending up in the psych hospital because of how intensely horrible my mood swings are getting how badly depressive that pms and that start of my period has become that's not normal for me guys and that has only been since I moved here into the city and I think that that needs to be recognized and I think it shows how severely out of balance my hormones are and there are a lot of contributors to what could put somebody's hormones out of balance. I am actually a very natural person so I do not use like 
much dyes. I don't use deodorants with chemicals. I don't use conditioner or shampoo or body wash with chemicals, which are great contributors to people's hormonal home hormones going out of balance. You might not believe this, but this is 100% true that the deodorant that you use in your armpits, which is one of the main hormonal places of your body when you are just pumping toxic chemicals into your armpits it is going to throw your hormones out of balance but I so I'm not just doing this to also be like go natural because I am actually a very natural person I use natural toothpaste natural deodorant natural all of that I'm participating in a type of lifestyle that encourages hormone balance. I have a healthy diet for the most part. I have a healthy, very healthy diet, which means that I have to contribute other factors. This At, at this point, the imbalance in my hormones obviously has to do with environmental factors. So there is, first of all, the aspect of living in the city where the air I am breathing is 100% not clean. And it's not clean just because, oh, it's it's smoky season, it's fire season. No, the, the air here is filled with so many toxins and chemicals all year round. And I'm breathing that in and my body isn't currently used to that. It's gotten used to a much purer environment living out in wilderness spaces for the past five years. Living that type of free nomadic lifestyle has really also helped clean my body of a lot of toxins. And now I went right into the city. Fucking toxin city. So I'm breathing in toxins. Even in the foods that I'm eating, like I'm surviving off of mainly food bank food. And I honestly do do think that food in larger cities is more filled with toxins, especially if you are surviving off of more food bank food or you have to live more cheap with what you're buying and you are just settling for what you can to survive more than likely those foods especially canned foods are filled with preservatives and chemicals that your body doesn't need that are probably going to throw your hormones out of balance as well another environmental contributor to hormonal imbalance would be my work environment which is severely overstimulating and stressful for me so i am planning on leaving here i'm actually moving to an even bigger city but i'm grateful because the job that i'm going to be entering into is a much more calm and peace inducing job so that already is gonna be a big bonus for me i do not plan on being there very long term just because i do not do so well in cities obviously but for now that is the best option for me so i am taking it and i am going for that but stress at my job i'm constantly overstimulated I'm constantly overwhelmed with the crowds, the loud noises, and just being in a stressful work environment, as well as being energetically sensitive to people, which can increase your stress levels. If you are an empath, an empathic person and you are constantly surrounded by a stressful environment, even if you are somebody like me who has in a lot of ways learned how to cope with and deal with stress in healthier ways, you remain much more calm at times in stressful situations like being around extremely high stress situations all the fucking time is probably also going to be a contributor to throwing off your hormones because a big contributor to hormone balance has to do with stress as well so there is all of these environmental factors and i'm just like okay a big part of like getting my hormones back in balance is gonna be about leaving this area But yeah, guys, I just wanted to, I don't know, like, it's just something that came up to share because today I have, the past couple days, my period is about to start, and the last couple days I have just been a stress bunny to the point that my medication is barely doing anything, and I cannot just, I don't want to keep increasing my dosage because at that point, uh, first of all, I I don't want to increase my tolerance to that degree and I don't want to become reliant on it so I'm just going to have to step back from it and let myself 
kind of flip out at this point unless it gets too bad and then I probably will hire my dose but I am just dealing with such a level of overwhelm every single month around my period that is emotionally and mentally debilitating to myself And while I've always experienced difficult periods, I think that this has become one of the first times in years where I cannot stand it when my period comes around because of how much more overwhelming it is emotionally, mentally, as well as physically How much more overwhelming it has become just because I am living in the city now. It's crazy. Hormone, I think, I honestly, I'm at a point where I feel like hormonal imbalance is a massive issue in society in larger cities as well as smaller cities and towns. Like, I think that people everywhere are just constantly filling their body with chemicals and it has definitely been a little bit of a reality check for me as well to be like whoa hey girl what are you putting in your body because yes you already live a mostly natural lifestyle but what ways can you improve and change because how bad those lows I've been dipping into every month every fucking month when my period comes around how bad it's been Now to the point where even medication isn't helping how intense it is during this time of the month for me. I definitely have to figure out other ways to create a balance in that. But I also realize that environmental factors are often one of the biggest, if not most of the time, the biggest contributor to hormonal imbalance in women. You see, and this is just an example, but if you see a woman who's in an extremely toxic relationship, hormone her hormones are extremely out of balance. This is actual science, guys. This is not just some weird fucking hippie shit. This is scientific. When women are more stressed out their hormones are more out of balance and as somebody who constantly is practicing stress reducing practices using stress reducing tools and still dealing with this even when i'm taking my medication uh, my stress levels are that fucking high Sometimes you have to change your environment to create balance in your life. And I do not think that that is always necessary. And yes, you can go a more monk type of route of being like, I will create it here. And a lot of people do. I know people who do that because they have responsibilities where they're at. But... I also think that a lot of times people will take that, like, for instance, the the grass isn't always greener concept as an excuse to remain in toxic environments. And this could be, like, your workplace. This could be a relationship. This could have to do with your family. This could have to do with an actual city that you're in. This could have to do with the home space that you're in who you share a home with or this could have to do with what you're putting into your body but a lot of people will use this kind of like monk mentality or like the grass isn't always greener as an excuse to stay in those toxic lifestyles in those toxic ways of being and in those toxic relationships or places and environments and I am all about finding the silver lining everywhere that you are. No matter what the situation is, if you can find the silver lining. And perhaps you can't, and that's totally okay. Some situations are really fucked up, and it's 
Oh man, sometimes it might seem almost impossible to fight to find a silver lining and maybe maybe there isn't maybe you won't find it for a long time i don't fucking know but i'm all about that little bit of a concept and creating peace in the environment that you're in but sometimes your body will speak to you through the way that it's functioning to tell you that you need to leave a certain type of situation that an environment is not healthy for you Your body is literally begging you to go. Your body is begging you to leave those toxic situations. So, this kind of took a little twist in a way that I was not quite expecting, but I think that it's a little bit of a message I wanted to talk about for a little bit. And I think that my period coming up and the hormonal imbalancing that I'm dealing with and how it's affecting my mental health and especially around my bleeding part of my cycle kind of gives me an excuse to bring this topic up but yeah guys I am definitely looking forward to leaving this area yes I am going to another city and I've already communicated to my friend that I'm going to help there that if that also becomes or is like a toxic place for me to be in I'm not going to stay there and I'm going to have to find somewhere else to move that is more wildernessy and I have no idea guys I have one place that I could go in the desert and I think that that would be awesome but I also do not want to spend the summer in the desert that sounds absolutely horrible and I think my dog would also absolutely hate that because he has really long hair and thick hair and so I don't know how where where exactly I'm gonna go after going into this city because I do not think it will be a permanent nor long-term thing but I'm gonna figure it out and for now I think leaving this place is number one and I'm gonna be spending some time taking my time getting to that other city and just kind of purifying my energy within nature and hopefully stop by the ocean to do that because the ocean is so detoxifying so 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 detoxifying maybe now would be a great time to detoxify your life if you vibe with anything that i'm talking about in this video Whether that is emotionally, mentally, physically, or environmentally. Detoxification. Yeah, it's good for you guys. I hope that this vibed with somebody out there in some way. Um, Please do like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video. Uh, I realize this one's might make some people uncomfortable because there are a lot of people actually who are really uncomfortable with talking about women's periods and it's just so absurd to me because it's such a natural part of my life it's something that i experience every month that i have experienced for a really long time and so I think that it should be normalized and I think that there should be more awareness brought to this part of us being alive and having ovaries and experiencing this so as well as hormones and how big of an influential factor our hormones our hormones are and in what ways we can create change and balance in that the unfortunately um sometimes the way that you need to create change and balance in your hormones is exactly the way that you don't want to do it because it's if it is environmental or relational which i guess relational would be considered environmental if this is an environmental aspect that is influencing that is influencing a imbalance in your hormones a lot of people are already so along in that that they don't really want to make a change a lot of people do want to make a change in that way but they will keep making excuses because sometimes making a change is difficult even if it leave, leads you to everything that you desire for yourself and creates more balance and peace in your life 
sometimes I think people can become really stuck in the way of life that they are already doing things that they would rather live with that stress level and the hormonal imbalance and all of the fucking intensity of just being depressed and hating their life rather than make a change but to each their own it's all I gotta say to that Ah, that is it for today, you guys. I hope that you have an absolutely amazing, magical, and beautiful day. Um, Once again, my name is Sharice, and yeah, I love you, and I believe in you. Okay.